Hi there, and welcome to the first episode of Deanster Talks. I'm your host, Dean Snowball, and today we have an interview for you. The band Terry Green. They're a post-hardcore and screamo band that's located in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, Earth. We have Dean live at their practice space, and we'll give it to you right now. Here it is. Thank you, Dean. I have here in their practice space, Terry Green. Could you introduce yourselves? My name is Adrian. My name is Adam. I'm Matt. Lewis. Thank you for having this interview with me tonight. Um, what is Terry Green? Terry Green, uh, we're a band from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. We started in 2014, 2014, January 2014, we had our first practice. Also, the first time we met our drummer, Adam, we are a post-hardcore band, uh, and we play shows and music. So guys, uh, for anybody that hasn't listened to your music before, how would you describe it? Rock and roll for lonely souls. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Like Adrian said, the best descriptor would probably be post-hardcore. There's a little bit of scream on there. There's a little bit of math rock. uh, A little bit of noise as of late. Yeah. So you guys have a new album coming out soon. Do you guys want to maybe share some details about that? Yeah, you know, it's a... It's not very long. It's, you know, it's only six tracks. Okay. You know, last one is a last last track is actually like three tracks. About four hours long. It's actually six tracks, but the last track's like three tracks. So you're really getting nine tracks, but you're paying for six. People so it's a really good deal we have. First track is sort of you know we we, we get right in there and we start uh, we, right uh, right out of the gate. No nonsense no rock nonsense. and roll right from the top. We got some more straightforward rock tracks. We've got some nice ambient melodic stuff. It's really just a great album and. I think you should buy it. Dude. I think you should buy it. Oh, I'm, def- I'm one of the first to buy it. Thank I'm you. One of the first. Any other details? Like, else about the album? Um, what, what is it called? Well, When's it coming out? I don't want to spoil anything, but we are getting a big time celebrity to uh, put the finishing touches on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to give anything away, but this is just a teaser for you guys. We got a real... Deanster Talks exclusive. Yeah, we got a real A-lister that's going to be featured on this record. A-list, A-list Screamo no, Celebrity. Not, not even Screamo, think, just Celebrity in general. You guys still uh, haven't decided on a title or anything like that? We went into this with a mind frame that, like, you know what, we're going to use today's technology, and we're going to use the best technology we have to record this album, because, like, why not, right, if it's available to you? So... D, I like sometimes there's two. I'm. It's just me. I'm the only guitarist in this band. But sometimes there's two guitars. D, I think there's at one point there's three guitars going on at once. So um, I feel like just for us, like emotionally, it was a really important thing to put out, especially just giving the consumer the value that they expect from the Terry Green brand. For us, I think that was the most important part. With visiting hours, it was just alright. We got a bassist, a guitarist, a drummer, and a vocalist. We're going and making an album. Not anymore. You know, we're taking a lot of uh. Uh, skills from our personal lives and previous experiences like lewis uh he's a software guy he's a code guy so (laughs) you're gonna find that on the album in the in the packaging and whatnot and my project management skills you know i want to put this out there for the whole world this guy's been turning my life around with his project management skills Mm -hmm. he's had these gantt charts whipped up for me every day of my life is all laid out and i just have to thank him so much every day i just whip up a spreadsheet or a gantt chart you know really (laughs) it's really helped uh the album you're really going above and beyond the status quo here. It's amazing what you guys are doing. We do not disappoint. Terry Green is about value. It's about respecting the consumer. And I promise you, I will never lie to you. When you're recording music, what are the main influences that you take into consideration? What are your main... It depends on you mean this record? For, for this record specifically. For this one specifically. I kind of just wanted to make it more live. Last thing we did was like with a click track, which was cool, but we didn't really vibe with it. And we just, you know, just as live and as loud as possible. Getting the noise stuff in there. Our live show has changed a lot. I'd just like to mention that uh, when we were planning on recording this, the thing that I had in mind was that was like, oh, we're going to drop like a lot of money. We're going to go to like a real studio. We're going to make this sound nice. We realized we don't really have money. <laughs> so we did a little uh, a getaway following uh, capping off the month of August, a very eventful summer for us. But it didn't leave us in the best of financial situations. If I could put it that way. The margins were all off. There was a lot of bad investments. So yeah, you know, this album, it didn't cost much, but don't let that fool you, folks. It's a good record. I, I still think that um, even though we didn't put like a, like so much money into it, like we didn't go to a real studio, we got the sound that we had intended uh, much, much better that way. 
because uh, we wanted it to just sound loud. We wanted it to sound raw and live. And uh, if we were, I thought if we put a lot of money in that, uh, then everything that we wanted it to sound like would it would just not sound like that. So I think uh, we we got it the way we wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we were recording, um, there's a lot more noise stuff on this album. Um, bands like Destruction Unit, Cult Ritual, bands where like the noise is like a big part of it and like a part of the like cohesion of the album. That stuff was all like kind of you know rolling around the brains. I think. All right, and now we'll take it back to Dean at the basement for his album review. Take it away, Dean. Thanks, Dean. For this episode, we're going to be reviewing the new Blank Banshee album, Mega. Now, this is an artist from Canada, more specifically Vancouver, BC, who is uh, a little on the mysterious side. We don't really know a lot about this musician. It's an electronic album that has a lot of trap and a lot of hip-hop and rap influence, but the main subgenre of music that this artist deals with is Vaporwave, more specifically, very nostalgic Vaporwave. They deal with a lot of trap and electro influence in their music. This recent album, Mega, is definitely a concrete example of everything that this musician is all about. A lot of really hard beats, a lot of nostalgic samples going on in this album. All in all, a very cohesively good album. I suggest you dance to this one. Back to you, Dean. Thanks, Dean. All right, we're back with Terry Green. (laughs) We're back with Terry Green. All right, now we're going to do an open discussion. There are no rules. You can say whatever you like. Any cusses. Uh, I just want to know what you guys are listening to and enjoying right now. Could be anything. Gregorian Chant, Little B, anybody. I was thinking about two albums, and uh, I got. I really like the new Joyce Manor. Yeah, I know you could say it. You could pfft all you want. Well, does it... Okay, the only thing about that that album is that it has that really cheesy Kanye West. Okay, all right. That's not the golden point of that album. (laughs) I think it's a great, fun record that I enjoy because I have my guilty pleasures too. There's no such thing as guilty pleasures. Shut the fuck up, Dean. No, I'm serious. Also, the new Jillian Carter record, probably the best heavy record I've heard all year. Pretty short and uh, is really aggressive. There's uh, the band Slow Mass from Chicago, a, a, a super group of sorts with uh, members of My Dad and Intuit Over It and uh, various other groups. They put out a very good EP, Treasure Pains, this year. And yeah, it's really good. I've, uh, you know, like Lewis brought up, Destruction Unit, I started listening to them a while back. And from that, it's just been like a bunch of other noisy stuff. And on the their label mates as well, Sacred Bones Records. I've been listening to a lot of their releases, so like The Men. Give a quick shout out to Growing Thins, our mm. best friends. We love those guys. They're my favorite friends in the whole world. Their new record's fucking sick. Uh, we saw them, played with them like about a year ago, and I thought they were awesome, and their record's awesome. Some of the best music of this generation is being created right here in Southern Ontario. Worst things that you have heard for this year, 2016? I've been listening to a lot of Steve Earle. Um, it's not very good music. I still listen to it. A lot of just really not good country music. Low quality, but it does turn your brain off. And that's probably that's the most important thing to me right now. Yeah, I've been listening to a, a little bit more Jefferson Airplane and Grateful Dead than I'd care to admit. <laughs> what about you, Adrian? Um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really heard anything I don't like that I kept listening to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that new Dillinger Escape Plan record isn't the best record they put out, but it's not bad. There, but I, I've been trying to get into Sonic Youth because I was never really into that band, and I just keep trying to listen to them, and I've listened to a lot of albums by them, and it's just not doing it for me. I don't know. Theoretically, I should love that band, right? But I like uh, Sonic Youth, but I feel that only certain albums I'll dig. Like what? Daydream Nation, Goo is okay. It was like the one that they kind of broke out with, right? That yeah. was Goo. All the other stuff, like, it's kind of just like, eh, all right. Yeah. Whenever. A year ago, I hated a lot of bands, and I would actively hate them, and I would say rude things on the internet, and then I just stopped, and I was like, why am I doing this? Like, why why do I keep commenting on Turnstile videos saying this is so bad, you know? I should just <laughs> just forget about that, you know? Fuck it, just let, they're not hurting anybody, you know? I heard a comment on a podcast I was listening to where, I mean, if, if you think about uh, a band like them, if they're doing this well... They've got to be good people. I mean, you can't get very well, far as being uh, a terrible uh, person. Uh, that, that's kind uh, of... Almost the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could, you could say that about a lot of bands, but, like, look at Black Veil Brides. Look like, at all these, like, metalcore bands. So are you saying Turnstile are bad people? No. No, we're saying I'm that... Just, I'm just messing We're around. saying that the guarantee of, of being successful 
is not the guarantee of being a nice person. I hate, I hate this interview. Like, so probably the energy. Three part question. One, what is your favorite artist that you grew to love in 2016? What is your favorite band that you've played with live in the past? And what is your dream artist to play with live? Uh, one band that I love playing with live uh, was uh, we did some shows with Nouveau. They're from Chicago. They're great band i grew to love this year i've been listening to a lot of 80s music for some reason nice. i used to really dislike 80s music but i really like the cure now for some reason they're a great band band i want to play with is a band we have played with but i want to see them again is loom because nice. those guys are fantastic uh I'll, I'll give it i'll give it to these guys realistic or no Realistically, I guess. Nah, yeah. realistic, realistic non-realistic. Well, non-realistic it. fucking Metallica, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Band I grew to love this year. Mm -hmm. Um, If I was on my way home and I like popped in music, I can only listen to one thing anymore, and that's Destruction Unit's uh, Live in San Francisco album. I guess them, like it's literally the only thing I can listen to anymore. Everything else is just too boring or... I don't know. Check it's a it's screen. a bad it's a bad phase right now. Like I, I wish I wasn't that way, but it's the only thing I can stand right now. It's fucked. I hope I get over this real soon. But um, favorite band that we've ever played with. Uh, we played in Waterloo with Congratulations. It was like a Congratulations reunion show, Ooh. and Congratulations set was one of the best like post hardcore sets I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, like really top five. Yeah. It was so amazing Good that one. night. Realistic band I want to play with is Congratulations again. Oh. We did two shows with Jillian Carter from Florida. Uh, they put on a really great show. They have the lights. They have, the, they have the lights going and everything. He's got the the guitar with the with the screwdriver slide and everything. And they've got the tone. They've got the big big drum sound and everything. And they're they're a very great live band. Definitely one of my favorite performances that I've seen from this year. Great people. I saw their bass player at an Applebee's, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and we didn't say anything. And that's my story for Jillian Carter. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in the middle of a Towns Van Zandt obsession right now. Word. It's pretty much the only thing I listen to anymore. Uh, it's bad, man. Like I, I'm listening to like bootlegs and shit. Band I'd like to play with. I don't know, man. I don't want to play with anyone. <laughs> favorite video game, favorite animal. We all know this guy. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII and oh, dog. Fucking animal. <laughs> I don't really play many video games, so I can't really, uh... <laughs> My all-time favorite video game is Sneak Sorry. King. Sneak uh. King by Burger King. At the moment, it is Skyrim, going through another phase. Uh, my favorite animal is this guy. Wow, that's fucking... All-time, it's probably uh, a capybara. Aw, oh, dude! I'm just gonna clear the air. Uh, this might be a little controversial. I don't really give a shit about animals, pigs, horses shit like that it doesn't really do anything for me i love video games though if animals made video games they might be <laughs> doing a little better in my books <laughs> i watch a lot of people play minecraft on youtube <laughs> because it makes me feel nothing the best part and i can't feel very joking. much right now he is totally serious he's not joking if you're looking for the, the southern pastor terry green this is really we should have put this in the beginning of the video as a disclaimer for anyone looking for disclaimer we'll probably, if you're looking for the southern baptist pastor terry green you're out of luck pal if you're looking for the r&b singer terry green you're out of luck pal if you're looking for the voice of every supermarket in the uk you're out of luck pal if you're looking for your estranged cousin terry green you're out of luck we are not terry green most of the people looking for terry green are looking for a pastor or an r&b singer stop messaging us it's alarming the messages we get on our page <laughs> and we can put them up the messages you know i'm just saying maybe you know not everyone's profile picture on facebook is them you know sometimes it's a sweet car sometimes it's a sweet landscape like this guy i know all right so that's it for our interview uh all of the interview, <laughs> slightly edited version of this interview, is going to be on uh, the YouTube channel. You can subscribe. There are links below. And yeah, Terry Green. Thank you, guys. Good stuff. Good stuff. Just after the interview ends, can we still talk? Or is, is that kind of just... Yeah. You shut down and you head out? No, no, no. I'm not going to leave you.